Hey, it's Wacko Bob here, and I'm here to do a uh, to redo basically what I did um, a few weeks back on um, the coin flip debate between Buddy Holly and Richie Valens, or between between rather between Dion Demucci and uh, Richie Valens. And I wanted to, I want I, the point I was trying to make here in the last one. I don't think I really got to really go with here well enough. So I want to want to go with it again here, mainly to say that that you know. I have a connection to Dion DiMucci. I never met him, but I know Dion DiMucci's sister, Donna, very well. She used to cut my hair when I had long hair and hair up front. <laughs> and uh, it's a lot of things uh, with her. I also took care of her uh, Her dog use. Uh, basically, she gave us her dog to stay with us, and the dog was pretty much attached to my mother, blah, blah, blah. It lasts about seven, eight years cute little dog named Alex, but that's another story. The point I want to come across here, though, is is who do I believe in this? You know, and, and you know, a lot of things can be said, too, you know. I know that uh, the movie La Bamba was probably the only thing that make, made any sort of reference to headliners. Uh, Buddy Holly charting the plane just for the headliners. <clears throat> Everything, it was a toss-up between Richie Valens and uh, and um, Dion for the seat, and Dion won the coin flip, but didn't want to pay the thirty-six dollars, so he gave it to Richie Valens. However, there is a coin flip that happened between both Tommy Alsup and and um, and Richie Valens, and uh, of course, Richie Valens won it. Now, a couple red flags here. Of course, why did why did Dion wait for decades to sit there and tell this story? He may he may have been afraid to uh, tarnish the image of Buddy Holly and even Richie Valens for that matter. That's why he didn't say anything. Tommy Alsop has come back. Why would I have to lie or anything like that? Connie, of course, Richie Valens' sister says that uh, he, she believes the story with Tom, uh, with uh, with uh, Tommy Alsop. Of course, it's in uh, Dion's book and everything. Now, to make this thing uh, totally clear. Who do I believe? I might believe both of them. The, hey, here's the scenario here on this one. Tommy also talks about having Buddy Holly having his wallet and everything just so he could just so he could uh, mail a letter and everything, you know, for ID, whatever else and everything. Does that make Tommy Alsop's story true? The answer is no. Tommy also could have handed Buddy Holly his entire wallet and everything, and never had plans to go on the pl to uh, go on the plane with uh, Richie Valens and the Big Bopper, or with Buddy Holly and the Big Bopper, rather. You know, I, you know that's one thing we got to look at too. Now, I made the point that Labamba was the only thing that made any any point of uh, headliners when you look at the scene between the guy who played the Big Bopper and, of course, Lou Diamond Phillips as Richie Valens, where Holly was going to get the plane and plane, uh, you know, charter a plane only for the headliners. Now, the point being here is, um, is, is the fact that you look at that point, headliners, the only one that made any references to headliners and everything was Dion DiMucci. So that kind of helps his story out. Everything else, though, refers to the plane being for Waylon Jennings and Tommy Alsop, which is what those two, which both Waylon Jennings and Tommy Alsop said. Now, the only other one we got is really Dion DiMucci. Richie Valens is gone. The Big Bopper is gone. And uh, in truth, let it be known, I kind of believe that there's another story here that maybe Buddy Holly was burning the candle at both ends. He said something to his bandmates. You know, and said that we're we're gonna go fly. We're gonna go fly to uh, Fargo, North Dakota, or, or wherever they were going. <laughs> but uh, instead, there was a you know you know. But instead, he had this also going on with uh, the headliners, saying this is the deal. Now, how do we know he wasn't burning the candle at both ends? For all we know, he might have been. For all he knew, all he knew, he wanted to get out, get out of that uh, school bus. 
that ridiculous converted school bus. And and when you really look at it here, you know, he might have just, you know, said, you know, I could get two other people on this plane. This way it's not me paying for it. And I could do, do, do right by someone else. The big reason why I say this is Richie Valens, even though everyone said how he's a highly he was a highly intelligent kid for seventeen and very very smart, how do we know that that uh, Buddy Holly wasn't burning the candle at both ends when Richie Valens ultimately got to have the seat that he lost the coin flip to with Dion DiMucci that he didn't have to go right over to Tommy Alsop who was expecting it and just really how Tommy Alsop for it. Buddy Holly could have been bur burning the candle at both ends with his bandmates and with the other headliners. That's something to really think about. Who do you believe? I don't know. I know that uh, pretty much uh, VH1 Behind the Music, all the A&E biographies and Bravo stuff, and also uh, you know, uh, you know, E! Entertainment pretty much backs the Tommy Alsop story on it. And if you look at the Buddy Holly story in La Bamba, there was really no ever mention ever made of Dion DiMucci. I being born in 1974, I was, you know, this is 15 years after when I was born. I wouldn't have known who Dion, I've heard of Dion and the Belmonts, but I, did I know they were on the tour? No. Did I know Frankie Sardo was on this tour? No. You know, did I know that Fabian replaced him? You know, and I believe Frankie Sardo's name is mentioned more there than he is with the regular tour. No, I didn't know anything. So, when you look at this, could Buddy Holly have been burning the candle at both ends? Did Because the coin flips, both sides could be telling the truth here. Both sides really could be. But because, you know, he was Richie Valens was intelligent... And everything he knew what was going on did you know he was also only a, a 17 year old kid and they're they're still easy to manipulate at 17 trust me I'm 39 years old I can tell you that what do you believe it's hard to believe uh, you know that uh, this is going on why did it take the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and a book that Dion was bringing out to do all that, to to have his side of this come out. I gave you one scenario there. Truthfully, I don't know. I believe I believe they both could be telling the truth. For all I know, they both may be telling a lie. In the end, I think there's a chance that Buddy Holly could have been burning the candle at both ends too. Not saying that that's the truth either, but that's one you got to think about. And I'll leave it at that. In the end, the Big Bopper is gone, Buddy Holly's gone, Richie Valens is gone. None of these people kept a diary saying, saying, you know, that I want a coin flip. The only one who I believe was guaranteed a spot on that plane no matter what, was J.P. the Big Bopper Richardson because he was dealing with the flu. I believe Richie Valens was sick, too. I believe he had a cold. But if you look at this, I, I don't think we should be taking sides on this. But how do we know that Buddy Holly was not burning the candle at both ends with his bandmates and with the headliners? I'll leave it at that. Side note, when I saw the movie La Bamba, I loved it. I thought listening to the single La Bamba was great. But when I saw the real Richie Valens, this is pretty funny too. When I saw the real Richie Valens, the way he sung and the way he played the guitar, number one, he did not look like Lou Diamond Phillips, he did not sound like Los Lobos, and he did not play the guitar like Carlos Santana. And that flipped me out. I was scared for the longest time. <laughs> uh, but uh, 
I'm not anymore because in the end, La Bamba had a description of uh, Richie Valens' right to you that he was this young, passionate kid that wanted to get uh, his family out of the gutter. And he succeeded at such a young age. That's just a little side note. If the plane crash never happened, what would it have been like? I think even if Buddy Holly did get back together with the Crickets, I don't think he would have had the same success. I think he would have probably moved on to songwriting and producing for other artists, and he would have had probably a bigger, an even bigger success. Richie Valens, in the end, even though I talk about my fears and all that, would he have still been in the business? I'd say yes, because he has the label of being a teen idol before there even were teen idols. And they even even when there were teen idols back then, if you compare those teen idols to and their music to Richie Valens' music, Richie Valens' music was more original stuff, and his music had a lot of backbone to it. You know, which a lot of teen idols, even to this day, really don't have. But um, I think Richie Valens would have seen probably, I think he would have seen more success. I believe that the studio version of Donna would have come out and that would have been a big hit for him. You know, uh, you know which would have been other, after the single of Donna. I think Come On, Let's Go would have uh, also made a comeback and had more success. So he would have been talking about uh, four, two different versions of Donna. You would have had La Bamba, which I think would have been another number one hit for him. I think Come On, Let's Go would have made, made a comeback and been a top ten song. To have Richie Valens actually be more the success story than the movie La Bamba made him. Plus, I think I think he would have been I think he would have been the the lead guy for rock and roll after the uh, Elvis go, going into the army and then going into acting. Chuck Berry's legal trouble. Jerry Lee Lewis's uh, legal trouble. He was in for marrying his uh, 13-year-old cousin. Oh, God. Uh, four and five would have been the Everly Brothers splitting up. Uh, the loss of Eddie Cochran. I think Richie Valens would have uh, kept rock and roll going until you got to the time of the Beatles. I think, I think 59, 60... 61, 62, would have been years for Richie Valens to be on top. And, uh, hmm, it's sad. Dion, I know Dion is a God-fearing man, and, you know, he admits up to his shortcomings uh, throughout his success. And I got a lot of respect for Dion. And Dion, if you see this, See this? Look up Wacko Bob and the Wacko in the Morning Show or the Wacko Network. I definitely would love to have you on my show. Whew. Also, the Big Bopper, what would it have been like for him? I think he still would have seen success. But I think he would have probably become the, the biggest natural figure in rock and roll before there were guys like Wolfman Jack and all that and even to some extent even uh, Dr. Demento because of the type of act that he was and the type of things that he did it's it, it's fun to think about but in the end you got to be realistic you don't know for sure what would have happened I have to personally think if Richie Valens even lived for another four months you would have had both, like I said, both versions of Donna. And the song We Belong Together was going to uh, also be a hit for him, too. All right. That's my story. Thanks for having the patience to listen to me. But what do you think? Was Buddy Holly burning the candle at both ends? <laughs>